Hello everyone and welcome to Split Second. As we have announced last week, we will be going to Tier 1 Con in Denmark next week. If you haven't heard about it, make sure to check the links in the description to find out more about the biggest CDH event ever put together. Plenty of great content creators will be showing up from all around the world, so make sure you don't miss out on this great opportunity for the greatest CDH gathering. On this note, this week we have three Portuguese friends that will also be coming to Tier 1 Con to battle for the great prize. Maraxis, winner of one of the Tier 1 CDH webcam series, brought his first sliver food chain. Kaka brought his TNT midrange list, Balis on his Kenrith hush evil list, and Afonso added blue to his beloved abs and combination, with Timna and Thrasius Razakats. Maraxis is going first and he kept his first 7, relying on paying for that fish with those 4 lands, Scrubland, Taiga, Flooded Strand and Verdant Catacombs, Lanor Elves for ramp and Silence for interaction or an attempt at winning. Kaka mulligan once and found a handful of interaction, Grading Pool and Tundra for lands, followed with a Preordain to dig for fuel. Abrupt Decay, Mana Drain and Drown in the Lock for interaction, whatever sticks to the table he can also have it, with Phantasmal Image. Bal also mulliganed once and found a Command Tower and Flooded Strand for lands, Talisman of Conviction and Bloom Tender for ramp with a deafening silence to slow the table, Tokatli Honor Guard and Strict Proctor prevent any dock side and other ETB shenanigans. Finally, Afonso kept his first 7 with an island, Verdant Catacombs and Gaius Cradle for lands, Birds of Paradise and Deathrite Shaman for ramp and Spellseeker to find some interaction. Finally, Survival of the Fittest can be the bread and butter for his deck, if it managed to stick. Ready for this match? Maraxi starts the game with a Flooded Strand that he cracks for an Underground Sea and he casts a Mystic Remora before passing. Kaka plays a Tundra and simply passes, holding that Preordain for later as everyone wants not to feed the fish. However, on Bal's turn, he plays a Command Tower and casts a Deafening Silence, claiming it is worth it to cast it despite of Remora. It's now Afonso's turn, he plays a Verdant Catacombs, cracking it for a Temple Garden, and casts a Deathrite Shaman before passing. Maraxis pays for Remora to stick around, as his game plan is to slowly find the needed pieces to combo, so he's good with a slow game. He plays and cracks a Verdant Catacombs for a Tropical Island, casts Lenor Elves and passes. Kaka plays an untapped breeding pool, taking 2 and feels he can't stay behind, so he casts a Preordain, triggering and unable to pay for Remora. He scries both to the bottom before drawing and passes. Bal plays a Flooded Strand and cracks it for a Plains. He casts Bloom Tender and passes. Afonso casts his Birds of Paradise and then plays a Gaius Cradle. He adds blue with Deathrite, exiling Bal's Flooded Strand and casts his Commander, Thrasius. He then uses his last green to cast Finhorn Elves and passes. Maraxis keeps paying for Remora, plays his Scrubland and passes. Kaka plays his Calding Tarn, cracks it for an Underground Sea and casts his commander, Timna, before passing as well. Bal plays a Plateau and casts Tokatli on her guard. He then casts Phyrex and Dreadnought, and it resolves 12 12 for 1 mana. Seems fair. He still casts a Strict Proctor, so it's harder to go for Thoracal, needing to remove 2 pieces. He passes to Afonso, who plays an Island. He then exiles Kaka's Calding Tarn with Deathrite to cast Timna. He then attacks Maraxis with Thrasius and pays one life to Timna's trigger. He follows it with the survival of the fittest, triggering Remora and not paying. Maraxis draws and thinks for a bit, but lets it resolve. Afonso passes and Maraxis finally lets the fish go. He plays a Badlands and casts a Ragavan to go along with his playmat. He then casts a Food Chain and it resolves. Hopefully he is missing a Cast from Exile creature or else he could cascade into all his creatures in his deck. And who knows, win next turn. Kaka is now on his turn and plays a Verdant Catacombs that he cracks for a Tropical Island. He then wishes to have a 12-12 as well, as he casts Phantasmal Image, slightly more fragile, but it can still make a dent. He passes and now Bal plays a Tropical Island, and then casts his commander, Kenrith the Returned King. It resolves and he activates it, giving all creatures haste and trample. He then attacks Maraxis for 17 and passes. On his end step, Afonso activates Thrasius, revealing a Rejuvenating Springs and activates Survival with his last green mana, discarding a Spellseeker to find a Notion Thief. He gets to his turn and goes directly to combat, sending Thrasius at Maraxis, triggering and paying one for Timna. On his second main phase, he lays a Misty Rainforest and cracks it for an untapped Watery Grave. He casts Notion Thief, since Maraxis is tapped out and it resolves. He then casts Vampiric Tutor as his single non-creature spell for the turn, and tutors for a Force of Will to the top announcing it is for interaction. In case things turn south, he can draw it with Thrasius. We're back at Maraxis and he starts things with a gamble. Afonso could tutor for an opposition agent, but he only has one blue creature in hand, which he wants to pitch for the foe. So Maraxis tutors for a Dockside Extortionist, and randomly discards a Thassa's Oracle. He then plays a Taiga and casts his first lever. 
Kaka responds to its cascade trigger with an abrupt decay onto the food chain. The cascade trigger then resolves and it reveals a mystical tutor, which he can't cast since he gambled already, so it's put onto the bottom and he passes. Kaka gets to his turn and jumps straight into combat, sending the phantasmal dreadnought towards Afonso, who doesn't block as it has trample. He casts a Finorn Elves and passes holding some juicy interaction. Ball does the same, jumping straight into combat. This time, however, he sends 17 damage at Kaka, as he is close to Ad Nauseam mana. He then plays the non-legendary World Tree and casts a Talisman of Conviction before passing. In his end step, Afonso activates Thrasius, revealing the tutored Force of Will and then activates it again, exiling Kaka's fetch with Death Right and finds a Marsh Flats that is put into play tapped. He gets to his turn and plays a Wooded Foothills and cracks it, and without any response, he shortcuts and cracks the flats as well, getting a forest and an untapped overgrown tomb. He then activates survival, discarding Ghostly Pilfer and getting a Phantasmal Image, which he also casts, entering as a copy of Phyrex and Dreadnought. You get a 12-12, you get a 12-12, you get a 12-12, everybody gets a 12-12. Well, not Maraxis though, set in his corner with the monkey. Afonso then goes to combat and attacks Kaka with Timna as a payment. She triggers and he pays one to draw a card. He passes, thinking of ways not to lose in case the other 12-12s steer his way. Maraxis plays the command tower and casts Mist Hollow Griffin, as it appears this game will be decided in battle. Speaking of which, he sends Ragavan at Kaka, connecting and triggering for a treasure and a chain of vapor. The table talks about chains and eventually Maraxis casts it, targeting Kenrith, forcing Baal to deal with the images and needing to recast the king. Baal responds by activating Kenrith to put a plus one plus one counter on Afonso's image, triggering it to be sacrificed, and then activates it again, putting a plus one plus one counter on his Phyrex and Dreadnought, as he is now going to aim the Chain of Vapor at Afonso's Survival of the Fittest, expecting him to target the image. Afonso activates Survival, discarding Lanor Elves and searches for an opposition agent. Shane then resolves and he copies it, sacrificing a forest, to target Kaka's phantasmal image, triggering it to be sacrificed and fizzling the chain, stopping there. Maraxis then passes and we're on Kaka's turn. He plays Thrasius and simply passes, threatening to deal with the 13-13 in case it goes his way. Baal plays a City of Brass and casts Uro. Its ETB is nullified and it sticks. He then casts Kenrith as his last card in hand. Kaka responds with a Mana Drain, and Afonso actually fires a Swan Song, as Baal was speaking about pressuring Kaka. The table now knows three cards from the four in Afonso's hand, Force of Will, Opposition Agent and Survival. Baal then goes to combat and finds he could pressure Kaka to block with everything so that Afonso could kill him, but that would mean losing Kenrith and taking out a blue player from the pod to interact with the other two. So Baal activates Kenrith to give Trample and Haste to all his creatures, and he divides the attackers, sending Dreadnought at Maraxis and Uro at Kaka, triggering and giving a card to Afonso. Maraxis fires an abrupt decay at the Dreadnought, and Kaka blocks with Thrasius, taking 3. In his end step, Afonso activates Thrasius, revealing and drawing a Lurus. He then activates it again, scrying to the bottom and revealing a Mana Crypt. He still activates the Threat Shaman to exile Baal's Phyrex and Dreadnought, gaining 2 life before going to his turn. He plays a Sea of Clouds and casts his cat, Luros. He then casts from his graveyard Phantasmal Image, which enters as a copy of Mr. Hollow Griffin. He then casts Survival of the Fittest before passing. On Marax's turn, he plays and cracks a Bloodstained Mire, asking if Afonso wants to fire his agent, but he refuses. He gets a Bayou and goes to combat, asking Kaka to let his Ragavan go through. The Sliver is sent at Afonso and he champs with a bird. Before damage, he uses Cradle to activate Thrasius, scrying to the bottom and revealing Razaketh. He still flashes in Opposition Agent and then activates Deathrite to exile Maraxis Thassa's Oracle to gain 2 life. With the last green mana, he activates Survival, discarding Razaketh and searching for a Ranger Captain of Eos. Ragavan gives Maraxis a second treasure and exiles a Freed from the Real, which he casts on his first sliver, hoping to maintain pressure and block as well. He passes and Kaka simply draws and casts Laboratory Maniac, finishing his turn. Baal draws and goes to combat, sending Uro at Afonso, hoping Kaka would take out the Notion Thief as he is claiming plenty of interaction. He doesn't, however, so Afonso draws. Afonso then jumps with the Phantasmal Griffin and Baal activates Kenrith to give Trample and Haste to all creatures, and then again to put a plus one plus one counter on Uro, so he can further pressure Maraxis as well. Baal passes and on his end step Kaka does fire a Drown in the Lock towards Luros, so Afonso can simply recast Phantasmal Image from the yard over and over. Afonso now plays a Windswept Heath and casts his Ranger Captain of Eos, knowing it will be denied of its ETB. He passes and it's now Maraxis' time to go to combat. He sends Sliver and Griffin at Afonso and Ragavan at Kaka. Afonso is the only one blocking with Findorn Elves. 
He then activates Thrasius, drawing an Arbor Elf and then again revealing a Thassa's Oracle to his hand. Before damage, however, Bal activates Kenrith, giving Trample to all creatures, for 9 damage at Afonso. Maraxis gets a treasure and a carpet of flowers from Kaka. He doesn't cast it, however, casting a Squee instead before passing his turn. On Kaka's upkeep, Maraxis fires a Silence, to which Kaka responds with a mental misstep, momentarily forgetting about Deafening Silence. He then plays a Gaia's Cradle and casts his Thrasios before going to combat and sending this one at his creator, Afonso. He passes and on his end step, Ball activates Kenrith twice to put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on him. He gets to his turn and goes straight to combat, sending Kenrith at Kaka and Uro at Afonso, triggering and giving him a card. Kaka blocks with Timna and Afonso blocks with Timna and Thrasius. Ball then activates Kenrith, giving trample to his 7-7s seven and passes. On his end step, Afonso gains 2 life with his Deathrite Shaman, and still in Ball's end step, Maraxis fires his Demonic Consultation, looking for something to deal with Ranger Captain of Eos, and maybe not losing to Afonso. It resolves, so he names Chain of Vapor. He exiles the top 6 and is free to go. He exiles a bunch of good cards, namely Brain Freeze and LED. Afonso then gets to his turn, draws and activates Ranger Captain right away. The table speaks for a bit and Ball mentions he could have something in case the opposition agent wasn't there. Despite the agent having flash, Maraxis fires the Chain of Vapor onto him, to maybe mess with Afonso's plans, and leave a window for Bal to interact. Afonso taps his Cradle for 3 and an Island for blue. Shane resolves and he sacrifices the Island to copy it, sending it towards the Catley Honor Guard. Kaka now intervenes with a Dispel, to which Afonso responds with a Tainted Pact, momentarily thinking that the Catley was being bounced, as he goes all in, leaving only 4 cards in the top of his library. The Ranger captures Silence resolves and then he casts Arbor Elf and follows it with a Thassa's Oracle for blockers, revealing his out of options. He then casts an Opposition Agent and passes with 7 cards in hand. Maraxis draws and plays a Scalding Tarn. He then goes to combat and sends everything at Bal. He blocks the two red creatures. He passes after that and Kaka simply casts a Smothering Tithe before passing as well. In his end step, Bal activates Kenrith to put 4 more counters on Kenrith and Uro. He goes to his turn, draws and doesn't pay for the tithe, he casts Timna and goes to combat. Despite Afonso being mostly dead through his lack of library, his agent and thief are preventing him to develop, so he sends his two big dudes at him. Uro triggers giving a card to Afonso and he doesn't pay for the tithe. Afonso blocks with one creature each as he accepts his demise, so Bal activates Kenrith to give trample and haste to all his creatures. Timna then triggers and he pays one life to draw a card, not paying for the tithe. He draws and casts Crop Rotation, to which Maraxis responds by cracking his Scalding Tart for a Tundra. He passes priority and then Kaka fires a Dovin's Veto. Bal then passes and Maraxis draws, not paying for the Tithe. He keeps on with the pressure, attacking Bal for 10 life. 14 commander damage counting as he doesn't block. He then casts Eternal Scourge and then casts Squee from his graveyard before passing. In his end step, Kaka activates Thrasius, crying one to the bottom and revealing a Reflecting Pool. He goes to his turn, plays an exotic orchard and activates Thrasius, scrying to the bottom and revealing a finale of devastation. He is then finally able to cast Eldritch Evolution, sacrificing the laboratory maniac, hoping to get Linvala. In response, Bal casts Eladamri's Call, hoping to deny that, but Maraxis responds with a dispel, so Bal activates Kenrith, gaining 5 life and eventually Lab Maniac evolves into a Linvala, Keeper of Silence. Kaka then casts a Dranith Magistrate and finishes his turn. Bal draws and pays for the tithe. He attacks Kaka with both creatures, triggering Uro, drawing a card and not paying this time. Kaka shams both creatures and in Bal's second main phase he casts Mana Vault and follows it with a Seedborn Muse, which resolves so he passes. Maraxis draws and doesn't pay for the tithe. He casts Necropotence and then goes to combat. He sends the Griffin at Bal and the Sliver at Kaka, who shams with the Drenith. Maraxis then pays 3 life for Necro and goes to his end step, putting those cards into his hand. Kaka starts his turn with a Tainted Pact, slowly looking for his Cyclonic Rift. He ends up exiling a bunch of cards, uh, I mean, all of his cards but three. He passes with plenty of mana to overload it and steal with the plan. Bal draws, not paying the tithe, and goes to combat, sending the big champs at Maraxis, so Kaka doesn't fire his Rift. Uro triggers and he draws, not paying the tithe again. Maraxis jump blocks and then Bal plays a high market before passing. Maraxis doesn't draw, plays a wooded foothills that he cracks for his savanna, and as he attempts to cast Squee from his graveyard, we notice that he can't use his Lanwar Elves. As he refrains from casting it, Bal mentions he drew a Cyclonic Rift. He then goes to combat, sending the Griffin at Bal and the Sliver at Kaka, who feels forced to fire his own overloaded Cyclonic Rift. 
Ball floats mana with his rocks, and Maraxis pays 3 more life to his necro before the table is reset. Before the step ends, Ball flashes in an Aven Mind Sensor, and then Maraxis goes to his second main phase. He casts his sliver, triggering Cascade and revealing a Dark Ritual. He chooses not to cast it, and then casts his Landward Elves before going to his end step and getting the cards from Necropotence. Kakano draws one from the three cards in his deck. He casts a Demonic Tutor, looking for protection or maybe baiting a Counterspell. As it resolves, he finds a Mystical Tutor to his hand. He then fires a Finale of Devastation for 3, hoping to revive his Lab Maniac. However, Maraxis responds with a Force of Will, pitching his Mist Hollow Griffin. With his plans foiled, Kaka attacks Bal with Linvala and passes. Bal draws, not paying the tithe, and casts Mana Vault. He plays Phyrexian Tower, turning the World Tree online. He then casts Sanctum Prelate and it resolves, so he chooses 2 to prevent a Rift from Maraxis. He then casts Strict Proctor as a Champ Blocker for the Sliver and Tocatlig Honor Guard as well. He then casts a Deafening Silence, to which Maraxi responds with a Mental Misstep. Bal then sends the Mind Sensor at Maraxis and passes. Maraxis draws, not paying the tithe, and sends his Sliver at Bal, sad for not being able to cast his Rift. Bal champs with his Strict Proctor, and on Maraxis' second main phase, he casts Ad Nauseam, desperately seeking a way out. Suddenly, Intuition could be an answer, but Aven Mind Sensor is stopping him, so he goes one card further… and it bursts. Another casualty, and we are on Kaka's final card. He casts Timna and attacks Bal before passing. Bal takes one from the vault, draws, and simply passes, as Kaka will die in his next draw step. GG. Thank you for joining us for today's match, everyone. Quite a grindy match where everyone wanted to win, but the stack pieces played a major role. We hope you enjoyed this match and eventually meet us next week at the Tier 1 Con for some more games. We'd like to start the credits by thanking our current patrons, and especially Izanagi, TG Rap, Mike Per, Aajimo, Uncrustable, Drunken Housecat, V, RJ, Heated Shield, and Pina, our stack breakers. If you want to support us, you can do so by liking this video, subscribing, or by becoming a patron yourself. If you want to go through other Commander adventures, click one of the videos on the right. If you want to talk with us about our games or other EDH-related matters, join us on Discord. Join us again next week for a new set of Commanders and more decisive plays. See you all then!